1937, George Krager, a pilot with Pan American Airways, commissioned internationally renowned architect Richard Nitra to build him a home in the southernmost tip of Texas, Brownsville. This home was unique to the area because it was put in a setting where Spanish colonial architecture is prominent. And with the development of this building came reflected designs of one of America's most influential architects, Frank Lloyd Wright. George Kreger, who is a, an interesting character, he uh, learned to be a pilot in the Austro-Hungarian Air Force in the First World War, and then uh, came over in, and was part of the uh, Pan American World Airlines when this was the largest international airport in the world, and all of the flights going to South, Central America, and Mexico stopped overnight here. This was his place to overnight and come to his international house that, uh, and have his parties and he was a very social kind of uh, fellow. Neutra was a, a very interesting architect. He was part of the international movement. Of course he did his early work in, uh, in Europe. Most of his work was done in California and then later he branched out into a number of uh, places in the United States. He also designed in a lot of subtropical areas of the world other than North America because his uh, style of architecture was particularly adapted for climates that uh, most people in the United States would consider uncomfortable, uh, hot, uh, steamy, and so he was trying to develop a style of architecture that was adaptable for these kinds of climate in the period just before air conditioning. This building is very, is very special because it's the only international style single family home in, in the state of Texas done by Richard Neutra. It's also the only international style home in Brownsville period and it was in a terrible state of disrepair uh, as it had been vacant for, for over 20 years. So the city decided it, it was time to at least purchase the building to save it from eminent demolition and then worry about it later on as to how we would handle you know, getting it fixed. What the city did is basically protect the building from any further damage. Um, and then what we did is we went in search of, of, of a responsible party that we thought could renovate the building, maintain the building, but even more importantly, to make good use of it afterwards. The city still owns the building. What we did is we leased it to the university, I believe for 99 years, and the standard is a dollar a year, but it was only for one dollar. The university, uh, bless them, has taken on the entire responsibility of the restoration. Uh, it's been particularly difficult, not only because it was in such poor condition and there was very little of its original structure left to hold it standing, but un unlike most buildings, we were lucky enough to actually have Richard Neutra's signed original drawings from 1937. So when you have the original drawings, it makes it a little more difficult because you can't say, well, gee, I wonder how this went and I wonder how that went. You're really kind of bound to duplicate what was in the drawings if you want to do a faithful restoration. And that makes it much more difficult because we're here we are since 1937 looking for materials to match uh, and the same workmanship that they had in 1937 when they built the building. And homes aren't built this way anymore, obviously. This is a very special home. The only thing holding this house up when we came was the stucco on the outside. It, the roof had been rotted and, dis and gone for so many years that all of the uh, interior uh, woodwork had rotted away, in, uh, certainly near the uh, floor, and a lot of it had rotted away entirely. And there had been several fires, and vandals had uh, stolen every piece of plumbing, wiring, hardware, light fixture, and sold for the few cents that they could be uh, sold for, for scrap. So unlike a lot of houses that get restored, there was essentially almost nothing left here and that is one of the biggest problems for restoration and going to be one of the longest uh, the items that requires the longest to fix because we're going to be looking for hardware and details to do this house to complete it in the right way for many years. It is much easier to find hardware for a house that is 150 years old than it is for a house that was built in 1937. For example, the gutters are made out of this crimped sheet metal, which is not made anymore. It was a very, very common material then. 
but very difficult to obtain uh, for the restoration. And so items like that were very made the restoration very difficult. Uh, all of the building projects that we do uh, all take a good long amount of time, and they always have their frustrations as well as their pleasures of doing it. Um, I always laughingly call each project the nightmare on whatever street it's on, and so this was just the latest nightmare, and this was the light nightmare on Prairie's Lion Road. But actually, we enjoy seeing how a building that is so close to complete collapse to be able to save it. Uh, it's fun to see that happen. And uh, being able to work with students uh, from the University in Building Trades as they learn the discipline of observing how a historic building is built and not just go in and rebuild it any old way, in a modern way, but trying to save and uh, save as much of the character of the original design as, as possible. And in that regards, uh, it's always fun to do a project like this. The city is proud to still be, you know, an owner of it, but we, we, we obviously are thrilled as to the job that, that Larry Loft and, and the university have done with it and the care they've taken with it. We've gotten calls from architects from all over the world to come visit uh, this building. It's very unique. Most of Richard Neutra's buildings, the majority of them, although he has them all over the world, the majority are in Southern California and many have been demolished over the years uh, just because of, they were in places like Palm Springs so people bought them just for the view, yeah. demolished them and then built something three times the size mm -hmm. and therefore losing one of the, a very famous piece of architecture which, which happens all the time so that's another reason that makes this one special mm -hmm. and Richard Neutra's son Dion who's now 80 years old and is still carrying on his tradition in architecture even mentioned that no Richard Neutra building was ever in this poor condition had ever been saved. Mm -hmm. So that's another accolade I think for the university for what they've done to save an example of international style architecture. If you grew up in Brownsville you just remember it as that sort of abandoned house on Paredes Line Road. Uh, it was relatively modern but it's a rare example of a transitionary and a, and a landmark building style. And if you'll look in Mexico, Mexico adopted and uh, used this international style far more than we did in the United States. In the old parts of Matamoros, before they renovated a lot of the fronts and the facades, you saw many houses that had a lot of influences from this international style. But it's important that we save periods buildings from all periods, not just buildings that are all 100 years old or 200 years old or 100 years old. Um, soon we will be out of buildings that were built in the middle of the 20th century and we won't have them for examples. So it's important to save a little bit of all architectural uh, influences and categories. The university wants to try to use it for some purpose related to architecture, perhaps in the future uh, being able to start or to uh, at least plan a school of architecture or draftsmanship or the like. And I think that's a particular fitting use uh, considering uh, Neutra's place in, uh, in the history of architecture. here was the first international style home in Brownsville. This building shares many underlying features such as emphasis on resource conservation and energy efficiency. Nevertheless, while it can be difficult to balance both preservation and sustainability in historic buildings, many are worth the effort. Thanks for watching. I'm Marla Elm.